What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode This is episode number 54 and we're starting today's episode off by seeing that three of our youth players want to terminate their contracts Kyriakos Johnson, Tossaint Froes and also Kyle Roberts as well uh, All of them have okay potential around the high 70 to low 80s mark Tossaint Froes is the best for overall which is 65 That's because I do believe I've been training him before But none of these players will probably succeed for Watford and become a valuable member of the squad However, they might develop for Canada. So the plan with these players is, as I mentioned before, is to bring them into the Watford team and sell them on next season. So you may be wondering why I'm promoting them if I'm not going to be planning on using them. That's because I don't want them to go into the free agents pool and just rot there forever. I want to give them some game time at other clubs. So I'll promote them, sell them to other clubs, and hopefully they'll develop there and be good enough for Canada, if not Watford. So we take a look at the league table before today's first and only game against Spurs. As you can see, it's the Premier League final day, but it's not the Premier League final day. Yes, yeah, an interesting scenario in today's episode of career mode as my bottle just falls off the table. An interesting scenario in today's episode of Career Mode, as you can see right here. Uh, right now, as you can see, 38 games have been played by the majority of teams in the Premier League, but we've only played 37. As you can see, City and United have both played a game extra than us. They've finished the season with 38 games, but we've still got this game to play against Spurs on the final night, because this game got rescheduled to Tuesday night. Never seen anything like this in Career Mode before. So we will play in the final day after the original final days were for so coming into this game, as you can see, City and United, who were our rivals for a top four plays, both have played their games. They've finished the season. United have two points uh, more than us, and City are on the same amount of points as us. But due to the goal difference record, it meant coming into this game, the final one in the Premier League season, we knew our scenario. If we won the game, we'd finish in third place ahead of both United and City. United would drop to fourth, and City would drop to fifth. If we drew the game, City would drop to fifth, and we'd move up to fourth, but not finish in third. United would stay in third place. But if we lost the game, we would finish outside of the top four and miss out on playing Champions League football next season, presumably. So coming to this game, it was quite interesting, but we knew what we needed to do. So that elevated the pressure for me. I was thinking, right, what do I want to do in this game? Should I chase the win? Should I really go for it and try and finish in third place? Or should we play defensive, try and get ourselves to the point we need to guarantee a place in fourth place? What should we do coming to this game? Do I want to risk it and go for a better place and a better finish? Or should we play it safe and hope we can get ourselves a point and finish in fourth place? But well, the game started pretty brightly. Both sides had chances early on, but the best chance of the half would fall in the 37th minute when Sofiane Bufal got himself inside and Ben Davies, the former Swansea left-back, takes down our Moroccan playmaker with an absolutely atrocious elbow to the face and Bufal hits the deck and the Welsh left-back does indeed get himself a book in and give away a penalty. So great chance in the spot for Troy Deeney, a man who hasn't scored in over 10 games. What a big moment this was for him and thankfully he took his chance as well. Watford won. At Spurs nil and our captain who has been underperforming massively over recent weeks does get himself a goal and does open the scoring here and it may be a penalty he may have scored quite a few goals this season three penalties not from open play but they all count Troy Dean puts it in it's his 13th goal of the Premier League season and our captain may have scored the goal that will fire us into the Champions League next season so Dini opens the scoring from the penalty and he does make it Watford 1, Spurs 0. So 1-0 up in this game, Deeney with the goal. And in the 60th minute, well, how about this? A great chance to make it 2-0, and we get it as well. Troy Deeney may have 13 goals and not have done as good as last season, but this guy has got his ninth goal of the season, exactly the amount he got last season as well. Ruben Loftus-Cheek, on loan from Chelsea, gets the goal here in possibly his final appearance for the club as his loan spell ends at the end of this season. What a lovely goal too. Quick little ball roll to beat one defender, then a quick little feint as well, and a crisp finish with the weaker left foot finding the back of the net a really really good strike by Ruben is he going back to Chelsea or is he going to stay at Vicarage Road well you know we'll be offering a contract we know we'll be executing those rights to the one million pound future fee with a range with Chelsea but will he be staying we'll have to wait and see but Loftus-Cheek does get his ninth goal of the season on the stroke of the hour mark makes it Watford 2 Spurs nil. and after that Spurs sort of fell apart really we kept on getting chance after chance Michel Vaughan did well to deal with his cross but only as far as Michel Watson Watson then gets on the ball and Gerrard's region finds Marco Ryan Ryan Tyler back to Danny Rose and the former Spurs left back almost scores against his former team but it's a great save by Michel Vorm and he turns it behind for a corner so still 2-0 the final chance of the game would fall to Spurs though in the 87th minute as uh, Son gets on the ball for them and the Korean takes it around his man picks out Delhi Ali and the former MK Dons midfielder puts the shot onto the post and behind for a goal kick but it was how the game would finish final score Watford 2 the new champions of the Barclays Premier League Spurs 0 so both sides at the end of the day got what they needed and is that Scott Triggs is that 
that the man with no legs back in FIFA 16? Can you see that? The man with no legs is back in FIFA 16, Kareem. And I don't know who he is. I don't know what player that's supposed to be. But that's the man with no legs. He's back again. Scott Triggs reincarnated. But uh, anyway, only long-term selves will know about that. But either way, Watford 2, Spurs nil was the final score. So both teams get really what they want come the end of the season. Spurs do get crowned champions. And we move into third place. And that does mean that next season, we guaranteed Champions League football of Vicarage Road and would also enter the group stages as well and won't have to play a qualifier. So really, really happy with that. But what a Premier League season though. Spurs winning their title with just 69 points. Chelsea and Watford in second and third with 67, only two points behind. United finished in fourth with 66. City with 64. Sixth for Liverpool with 62. It was a really, really tight Premier League season where genuinely no one got away from the pack. It was a very close, very tight season. The title could have been won by any of those five teams really with just a few games to go but either way we have guaranteed a place in next season's Champions League going directly into the group stage as well won't have to play a qualifier and I'm absolutely delighted about that it was our main name for this season and we also won ourselves our first ever FA Cup our first European trophy winning the Europa League so what a fantastic season I mean yes I know I read the comments and a few of you guys have been disappointed that we did miss out on winning the title in our second season but that was always going to be a massive massive ask but to win the Europa League to win the FA Cup and also to finish third as well guarantee a place in the group stage of the Champions League next season you've got to call that a really really successful season and there is confirmation right there Butler won goalkeeper of the tournament was the only was the only Watford representative in the team of the season as well and there you go and also as well you see the final uh, look at the other competitions we did indeed win the FA Cup City won the Capital One Cup the side that beat us uh, were Leeds they finished in the semi-finals before getting thrashed by Liverpool we did win the Europa League as well won it by four goals to two and also the Champions League League winners. Uh, I think I did forget to record that, or maybe I'll show it in a minute. But uh, the uh, the Champions League winners were Barcelona. Unsurprisingly, they always seem to get into the Champions League final at least in uh, this year's career mode. Still following that, the Canadian players all decided to accept their contracts to the club. So I'm really happy with that. You'll see their stats in just a moment's time. None of them have any tags on them, like an exciting prospect or showing good potential or has potential to be special. Unsurprisingly, there's confirmation of Barcelona win the Champions League. But uh, either way, they'll come into the club. You'll see their stats in just a moment's time time and again that the plan really is just to sell them to other clubs hope they'll get some game time there hope they'll develop and be good enough for Canada because I don't want to abandon the Canadian project uh, project obviously next season we'll finally start to have the qualifiers with Canada I do want to take them to a World Cup I think that'll be a really really awesome side story but obviously the players just quite frankly aren't good enough to uh, go into the Watford team still following that as you can see the fee was due for Ruben Loftus Cheeks so we go ahead and offer him a contract unsurprisingly what a fantastic signing he's been on loan for us. We've got that £1 million future fee arranged with Chelsea, so we're offering a contract and we'll wait and see what he says. Hopefully Loftus-Cheek will sign for us. That'll be a steal at just £1 million and uh, that will be a really, really good signing for us. And you can see the squad report right here for the players. Once again, I will say I'm quite disappointed that a few of the players just haven't grown or uh, grown very well despite the, uh, the game time and the form they've been in this season. But a few of the players are looking pretty good. I'm happy with the development of some players. You'll see Marco Ryan Taller as well in his debut season for us. The guy looks like an absolute boss and also works worth noting his physicals have gone up really nicely too now that's a surprise because youth players physicals I've always found are really really hard to develop but Ryan Tyler's physicals have developed really nicely you'll see he's now got 84 sprint speed and 79 for acceleration so Ryan Tyler if he becomes a rapid winger with all those technical stats as well that would be absolutely fantastic wouldn't it but uh, we'll have to wait and see uh, you see the stats of the players as well how they got on how they did for us in terms of appearances goals assists and clean sheets and their average ratings as well so for the plan for next season, you know, what uh, area I'm going to strengthen, I'm not really sure, to be honest. We've got a really, really good squad. Of course, got Balotelli coming in next season as well. That's going to be really interesting for us. Uh, definitely going to make next season certainly quite interesting. We've got Lloyd Isgrove coming in and Joe Davis as well. Davis, of course, a centre-back, Isgrove a winger. So... Not entirely sure what area I look to strengthen next season. Possibly the fullback areas because Rose and Neom just aren't growing. But Iortha is developing quite nicely now up to a 75 overall. So I might have him as my first choice right back. Not entirely sure. But we'll have to wait and see. If you have any transfer targets for me, as per usual, feel free to let me know what they are in the comments. Always like getting your suggestions. But uh, still, you can see the stats of the players here. And also following that, how about this? For a very, very disturbing turn of events. Ruben Loftus-Cheek has decided to decline 
signed a contract. He says he's happy where he is, he's settled where he is, and he doesn't want to relocate, despite the fact he's obviously been living in Hertfordshire for the past two years, presumably, playing for Watford. But either way, Loftus-Cheek declines his contract, and as you'll see, we keep on offering a new deal, we keep on giving Ruben Loftus-Cheek a new contract. You see, Sean Murray's contract is uh, running out, and I'm going to let him uh, go into the free agents pool, as I don't have plans to use him. Loftus-Cheek declines his contract time after time after time again, and I've read some comments from you guys saying that there's a glitch this year, or after a two-year loan deal, the player, no matter how much money you give him, just will not accept a contract with your club. And it turns out you guys are right. I didn't actually really take you very seriously. I kept on thinking to myself, no, 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 no. That's probably just specific to your saves. I'm sure Loftus Cheek will want to stay at Watford. I'm sure he'll want to stay at Vicarage Road because of how much we value him. But no, we keep on offering Loftus Cheek improved deals. You can see this one's 70 grand a week, 10% goal bonus, four-year deal, which is what he wants, a crucial first team player status. But every single time, we offer Ruben Loftus-Cheek a new deal, you will see he keeps on saying no, and he says the exact same thing. He's settled where he is, and he doesn't want to relocate. Ruben Loftus-Cheek keeps on turning down these contracts, and as you'll see, doesn't accept a new deal here with Watford, and doesn't want to stay at Vicarage Road. So I was prepared to make this guy the star. He was going to be the hero of the series, but now it's looking quite possible that he might turn into the villain of the series. Ruben Loftus-Cheek may be going from face to heel in terms of popularity. I really wanted this guy to be the star of Watford. I could see him being a future captain for many years to come. But no, Loftus-Cheek doesn't want to come to Vicarage Road and stay here. He wants to go back to Chelsea. He wants to fight for Mourinho's affection and love and place in the Chelsea first team. He wants to return to Stamford Bridge and stay in London. So very, very sad news here. Loftus-Cheek turns down our final contract, which is 85 grand a week, 10% goal bonus, four-year deal on a crucial first team player status. He turns it down, and as you'll see we run out of time as Chelsea eventually come to us and say that we didn't execute the rights uh, to uh, offer Loftus-Cheek a deal and therefore they're going to take him back. So very, very disturbing, very, very distressing news. Ruben Loftus-Cheek looks as though he is going to stay at Chelsea unless we somehow negotiate a new deal next season. What's going to happen with Loftus-Cheek? It's going to be a really, really interesting summer transfer window. Is he going to come back to Vicarage Road or is he going to turn to the villain of the series? and stay at Stamford Bridge. But that does end the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed today's episode of Korea. And if you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, as it is much appreciated. And of course, it really does help my channel out. The next episode will be the goal of the season. That's out tomorrow afternoon. And then the new season will start on Saturday morning. Don't miss that episode. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens with the Loftus-Cheek saga. Will he be staying at Chelsea, or will he make a U-turn and return to Vicarage Road? Don't miss it. It's going to be good. Thank you for watching this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have, then please do leave a like. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.